Leads and deals inside of monday.com may seem very, very similar, but there is a difference. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining what that difference is and the best practices for how to use both leads and deals in monday.com. So as you can see here, I'm in my monday.com sales CRM. And on the left-hand side here, I've got both leads and deals. Now, firstly, let me explain what leads are. So leads inside of monday.com, and let's not get it wrong, it is often confused with deals. Leads are people that have inquired about your product or service, or they are prospects that you are trying to outbound or get in touch with to tell them about your product or service products or service. So all inquiries, in my opinion, should go straight into the leads area, especially if they're new. If they are existing business inquiries, then of course, that's just a new deal. And I'll come on to that in a moment. But if anyone new has inquired, you want to put them into your leads area. Now, the reason being is just because they've inquired doesn't mean that they can afford your product or service. If you are, if you're product service is $100,000 and they do 10,000 a month in revenue or 5,000 a month in revenue, there's no way they're going to be able to afford it. Okay. Um, so can they afford it? Are they a good fit? So can you actually help them? Um, would you be able to solve a problem that they have? And thirdly, are they interested? So just because they can afford it and you can help them doesn't mean they're necessarily interested in working with you. They may have a different person or a partner that they work with. Um, so those are the three qualifiers. So what I would do is I personally would have all of my leads flow into the leads area inside of monday.com or all my inquiries flow into the leads area inside of monday.com. And then from there, I would have a conversation with them and I would try and qualify them. I would nurture the leads, make sure that they are a good fit, they can afford our products or service and they are interested. Once they make it clear that they are interested and they fit all other criteria, then and only then do they become a deal. Now, people are often confused by this and they think that all inquiries should just go straight to deals. But I want you to imagine this example. Let's hypothetically say you get a million inquiries. That's a lot of inquiries, right? But only 5% or 1% of those can afford your products or service, are interested, and you can help them. If you put all of those in deals, your conversion percentage would be 1% right? Which, which is a terrible sales conversion percentage because it's not actually your fault that the conversion percentage is bad. It's simply because they were not a good fit. They were not right for you. You couldn't sell them even if you really wanted to. Um, so it's got no representation of your ability to sell. It's actually the representation of the quality of inquiries that are coming through. And that's why we use the leads area as a filter. That's the other way I'll describe it, a dumping ground, a filter, um, and it's through the funnel, okay? So leads and then to sales and then obviously to the actual fulfillment once they choose to go ahead with the sale. Um, so it's a funnel. So the alternative time to be using leads as well is if you are doing outbound, so you're sending emails out um, to cold prospects, you would track that in the leads area. And then again, if they show interest, you can help them um, and they can afford your product or service, then you would qualify them and move them over to deals. I mean, if you're doing outbound, I would really like to think that you're not gonna be sending emails to people that can't afford your product or service uh, and you wouldn't be able to help them. That would make no sense at all. So now we've got the leads area cleared up and it makes hopefully more sense as to when you want to use the leads area. Let's now head over to deals. So now we have the deals area and that is the actual sales process. So of course the leads area is just for qualification and nurturing and then the sales sales or the deals area is the actual sales process. So as you can see here, we have a number of stages for our deal process. We've got new discovery proposal, negotiation one, and then consequently lost if it's bad news. And that is what that process looks like. Not, not all inquiries should become deals unless you're doing something incredible or remarkable. Most of the time there is a drop off between leads to deals. And then there is a deal process or a sales process that needs to be followed for each of your prospects. And you walk them through step by step, through the various stages and that is obviously going to depend on what you do as a business so hopefully the difference between leads and deals inside of monday.com has been made clear thank you very much for watching if you need any help setting up monday.com for your business check out the link below we'd be delighted to help thank you very much for watching and i'll see you soon goodbye